Hello everyone. We live in dire times right now. COVID-19 has us by the feet and we have to work from home. To make that experience as good as possible for my colleagues and my customers, I tend to remove backgrounds during my WebEx sessions. So let me show you in the next six, seven minutes how this is done. Uh, it's not that difficult, you might think. And um, yeah, let's go, have a look. So the first thing you need to do is download OBS. OBS is the open broadcaster software which is needed to record the green screen and take out the green behind me. So after we've downloaded that, let's download a little bit, we need to download ChemTwist. ChemTwist is the actual emulation software which emulates the webcam for the green screen to be transmitted to your WebEx session. So, <clears throat> we'll download that too. When everything's downloaded, we need to install it, which is very straightforward, as you can see here. Let's start with ChemTwist, which is downloaded first. So when you try to install ChemTwist, you will see that it actually alerts you with a warning message. That is fine. Click on OK go to your applications and go to system preferences and there you can go to security and privacy if you click on security and privacy you will see and you can see here on the general tab that you have chemtwist was blocked you can be pretty safe that chemtwist will not destroy your computer so just click open anyway you do that you get warned again and then you should click open which then guides you through the actual setup process where you can then install cam twist same thing has to be done with obs we'll just drag it over to the applications folder and we're done with when you start obs you see something like this this is the setup First thing you need to do is add a camera, which is the video capture device, which is your actual webcam. Now you can give it a name if you want to. So you select your actual webcam out of the drop down list here, which in my case would be the Tanberg HD. As you can see now, it is just this green screen of myself. So now we go unlock the preview if not already done and we can drag it to the size that we want it to have. I would go for the full screen version of it. So now the screen is still green. Um, we should maybe look at some random backture that we can drag in the back. We again resize it to the size we would like to have and we'll drag it behind the video capture. So. You can lock the preview if not already done and you can look into the video capture device by clicking with the right side of your mouse and clicking on filters. In filters we should add a new filter called chroma key. Chroma key is actually the thing that takes out the green so look at the magic it's already there. That was nearly it. You can see a little bit of a greenness in my face which we can take away with the um, color spill reduction, which you can see now, it's getting a bit better. But you can tweak around a little bit with that. Also, we can work a little bit with the uh, similarity factor where we are trying to get away, which is the right point where it's the green screen is gone, but still the, the frame around me is not there anymore. But it's actually quite good, as you can see here. So we do have a good, fine outlining. So. Then what we could add is a, a logo of some sort, either it's an image or we just want to type in text here. That's fine too. And we can unlock here and drag that around a little. So that's it from the video part. Now, one thing we have forgotten, we need to add a siphon. Siphon. How does that look like? We do go on add and go to Siphon Client. Siphon Client. Click on that. Just give it a name or not. And now you can see a drop down which is empty here. 
we have to change something here, which is we have to launch the Siphon client, which is the Siphon inject. Do that. And then you scroll down here until you find the OBS part and you click on inject. This will trigger the source back in OBS to show OBS injected Siphon. That's actually the routing tool that routes the signal back to the actual webcam capture. What we see now, though, is this little frame and frame and frame and frame and frame and frame and frame indefinitely. Why? Because the Siphon client is on top. We just drag it down. That's it. Done. Now we need to start Cam Twist. We just go to the app, click it, start it, wait. When Cam Twist is started, it starts mostly with the preview. If you do not see the preview, just go on View, Preview, or put the Command P button on the Mac. So now we need to find the right effect, video source, in this case, Siphon. We just double click it. Siphon appears in the effects in use, and then you click the drop down and select OBS. Now you have prepared everything for your next WebEx, because if you now go into a WebEx, let's do that right away. If you now go in the WebEx, Either you already see your camera here, or you can select it from the camera options. So Cam Twist now is an official USB-based camera. That's at least what the WebEx thinks. And you can start the meeting. And from here on, you have it all running. Now this process is a little bit of cumbersome sometimes. So what I've done is I have created a little script that looks a bit like this. So if I think it's too annoying to boot up all these little tools, <clears throat> what I do is I simply say to uh, Siri, hey Siri, I'm listening. Start studio setup. And then it starts all the programs. It starts OBS, it starts the cam scanner app, it starts the Siphon app, it loads the Siphon into the app, and here's my camera, as you can see there. So that's the process which I did. I have uh, probably provide the, the link to the script within the YouTube video. I hope everything works for you. If you have further questions, just reach out to me here under the selected um, comments field. Thank you very much. Have fun with this and good video conferencing. One of the things uh, that needs to be mentioned, since this is a little bit of tweaking with the operating system, it might be necessary, really depending on the version of macOS you are using, it might be necessary to do a very, very dangerous thing to your operating system. It is called the uh, system integrity protection, which normally should make sure that no malware or any other software takes control of your operating system. We have to turn this off and um, this is something we should think about if we want to do this, but this might be necessary in your version of macOS. If this is the case, again, warning, 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 this can break your computer. If in the future some virus, some software gets installed and tries to access the uh, library folders or any uh, bin or but if you decide to do this, you would have to go do the following. First, you reboot your computer, hold down the command key and the R key, and wait until it comes into recovery mode. When your computer is in recovery mode, you simply click on the upcoming um, window. We go on um, utilities terminal, in utilities terminal, you then click, you know, the, the terminal will open. When the terminal will open, you have to type in the following, CSR util disable. Then you get the feedback that the system integrity protection is disabled. You reboot your machine, and now you have the ability to 
tweak around in certain operating systems with your camera. If at any point in time you want to come back to it, you do the same procedure, command R, CSR util, enable, that's it. Just as an information that you might need to do that. 